formworks and scaffoldings are the temporary members in construction. However, they still add to the total cost of the building. Thus, they needed to be estimated properly. Learn how to do just that here in Quantity Surveying. Like in the image, forms are temporary sheathing used to contain the volume of concrete in creating a shape and size of a member. To easily take the forms out of the member, greasing it in crude oil mixed with motor oil is the most economical approach. As plywood is one of the most common formwork material, it is best to review the properties of the material. Plywood comes in different thickness from 1 8 inch to 25 millimeters or 1 inch. There are two standard sizes of plywood and the more commercially available size is 4 by 8 feet. There are two types of forms for rectangular members like columns and beams. The first is continuous rib type where a frame has another bracing placed on the center. The other is stud type where the form frame has to be reinforced transversely. The frame and ribs are mostly of 2 by 2 inches rough lumber, and the form itself is plywood. In terms of assembly, the continuous rib type is faster to make as the long middle brace only needed to be hammered on two ends. However, it requires a longer bracing length. In construction, as these are temporary members, scrap lumber is commonly used to maximize it, so the stud type is assembled, although it requires more connections. The first method in estimating rectangular or square columns is the direct approach. In this method, the perimeter of the plywood form is computed as the perimeter of the column plus 0.2 meters. In the formula twice of A plus B plus 0.2 meter, A is the shorter side of the column and B is the longer one. When the form is placed, it is the plywood and the 2x2 two two frame all together, and they will be nailed at the edges. Having a 2 inch width of frame, there should be an allowance of 2 inches on the plywood at both ends too. Taking into account 4 edges of 2 inches account for the additional 0.2 meter in the formula. The total area of the form is the perimeter previously computed times the height of the column multiplied by the number of columns. With the area identified, the number of plywood forms can be determined by dividing it by the effective area of a single plywood. In this case, we use 4 by 8 feet plywood size as it is more commercially available. After the plywood, estimate the board feet needed for the frame, and that is where the table gets into the solution. Let's try this example to check the procedure. Six columns of 0.3 meters square with a height of 4 meters are to be estimated with a quarter inch plywood and 2x2 two two wood frame for the continuous rib type forms. First is to take the perimeter of each column using the equation, that is, twice of 0.3 plus another 0.3, then add 0.2 to have 1.4 meters. The total area to be wrapped with the form is 1.4 meters times the height of 4 meters with 6 columns which totals to 33.6 square meters. 
The number of plywood is then computed as the total column area of 33.6 divided by the effective area of plywood as 1.2 by 2.4 meters, resulting to 11.67 rounded up to 12 pieces of plywood. The frame is then computed with the help of the table, particularly frame for 2 by 2 lumber, that is to take the plywood pieces multiplied by 29.67 board feet per piece, yielding to 356.04 board feet of 2 by 2 frame. Just for comparison, check out the other method using tables to determine the plywood forms. The perimeter is taken only as twice the sides and the area is solved by multiplying the perimeter by the height of the column and the number of columns. The number of plywood forms is solved by multiplying the form area with the multiplier provided in the table. The frame is also taken by multiplying the form area by the table multiplier for frames. With a similar example, let's check the difference of answers. So the perimeter is twice of the summation of 0.3 sides of the column, resulting to 1.2 meters. Now, the total area is 1.2 times the height of 4 meters for the 6 columns, which is 28.8 square meters. The number of plywood uses the area of 28.8 square meters multiplied by 0 0.488 piece per area as written in the table. This gives 14.05 rounded up to 15 pieces of plywood compared to what we computed earlier as 12 pieces. The 2 by 2 frames area also estimated as the area of 28.8 times 12.71, giving 366.05 board feet of 2 by 2 rough number. Again, a difference of 10 board feet for the frames. Next is for circular columns, where the form used is a plain metal sheet as it is easy to form it to the desired shape. The direct method of estimation starts with the circumferential area, which is the column circumference times its height and the number of columns estimated. The formula for circumference is pi d, or pi times the diameter. Next is to solve for the number of metal sheets as the circumferential area all over the effective area of a single metal sheet. The vertical ribs and circumferential ties are determined through the table of which contains the different sizes of metal sheets available. Say that with the same example showcased in the rectangular columns, we convert them into 0.3 diameter columns. The new area turns out as pi times twice the radius of 0.15 meter multiplied by the height of 4 meters and the 6 columns, giving 7.2 pi square meters. So the number of metal sheets is the area of 7.2 pi divided by area of one metal sheet, and that is 1.2 by 2.4. So we get 7.85 rounded up to 8 pieces of GI metal sheets for the forms. In case we use the table, the circumferential area is multiplied by the table multiplier of 0 0.347, still yielding 7.85 pieces, giving 8 pieces just the same. For the vertical ribs, take the circumferential area and have this multiplied with the factor for the particular size of metal sheet under the column of 15 centimeters, as this is our assumed spacing of ribs around the column form. That is, 7.2 pi times 25 to give 180 pi meters. Then, this is converted into a steel bar commercial length, say 6 meters to get 94.25 pieces, which can then be roughly 95 pieces. With the vertical ribs, we also compute the circumferential ties with the same procedure, and only a different factor. So the length of circumferential ties is the area of 7.2 pi times the factor 9.52, giving 215.34 meters, 
which can then be computed into a 6 meter commercial length, giving 36 pieces of steel bars by 6 meters. Thank you.